<clears throat> Brian talked about the secular love a little bit that we see, <clears throat> that we celebrate on a day like today. Boys, you all remember what today is, right? And I'm talking to you all online too. Let me give you just a hint. Your wife is expecting like maybe flowers or candy or dinner or am I getting warm? A diamond. A diamond. There, whoa, there we go. Valentine's Day is falling on a Sunday. You know, and, and, and Valentine's Day is a, is a secular holiday, but what a good time to think about love, to share love, Amen. hugs, hands to hold, to touch somebody with love. And as I thought about this, a love story of touch, just of a touch, kind of comes to mind. And it's full of hands to hold and lives to be changed. It's a story of healing and hope and our loving God teaching us about his love. Not the kind of love that we find on a card or find in the Hallmark store, but real, tangible love. Let me read to you from Mark chapter 5 and verses 21 to 34. You will all know this story. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, the Sea of Galilee, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and, they left out the word just, please come and just put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Just a touch was what he was asking for. A touch from the Son of God. Such a simple verse, verse 24. It says this, so Jesus went with him. Didn't have to. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. She had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? And the disciples jump in. I, I imagine Peter was the first one to jump in here, but that's not recorded. Messiah, you see the people crowding around you. Yet you ask who touched you? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Did you, did you ever wonder about the sick woman? I imagine when you look for her, you got to kind of look pretty low. Because that's where she lives. Forgotten by society, unclean. Society had written her off. But not this Jesus. Imagine she's low on everybody's priority list too. Certainly low on the social scale. I want you to see her, thin and sickly and diseased. It's definitely somebody people will not touch. 
She's almost completely hidden in the crowd that's scampering after Jesus. He's walking and, and she's pretty desperate. Mark chapter 5 and verses 25 and 26. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, Jesus. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Anybody go to the doctor? All of us, right? Anybody have to go to the doctor often? Anybody have to go to the doctor for 12 years? 12 years of treatments, herbs and diets and incantations and all the things she tried to get well. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Can you imagine 12 years of that and in the end, you're broke? Doctors who took not the disease away, but probably took advantage of her. I can see that. She'd spent everything she had to pay them, but she wasn't getting better. In fact, she got worse. Kind of reminds me of our furnace. <laughs> now she's faced with no health. She's faced with no money and probably no family to help her. See, she was unclean according to the Jewish law. The law protected women from aggressive and insensitive men during those times of the month. In this woman's case, a severe application of the law left her not only untouched, but untouchable and ceremonially unclean. My friends, this woman's hand, the one the one you see in the crowd, the one that's, that's reaching for the robe, it's a hand that nobody will touch. Because if they did, they're now unclean. And then now they're ostracized. I'm sure her condition wasn't always the case. I imagine maybe a husband once took care of her and had her in marriage and touched her that way. I bet she looked different in her younger days. Maybe clean and maybe soft skinned and perfumed. And I, in my mind, imagine a husband once loved this woman. Maybe a family once relied on her to cook, to sew, to take care of, to wipe tears, to, to tuck in with blankets. She could have been a mother. And everyone knows the touch of a mother. Moms are never still, except if they're really sick. Not sure of any of that. Here's what we do know. She has nothing. She has no money, no health. She's completely distraught. She's unwelcome in the synagogue. She's unwanted by her community. For 12 years she suffered. She has nothing and her health is getting worse. And maybe that's what did it. Scripture said instead of getting better, she grew worse. Maybe this morning she could scarcely stand. Maybe when she splashed water on herself and looked into the pool, it was like a skeleton she saw looking back at her. Maybe what you and I see in those Auschwitz photos, maybe that's what she saw in her reflection. Gaunt cheeks, taunt skin, big depressed eyes, but she's desperate. And her desperation births an idea. Verses 27 and 28, when she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. 
they say this is the Messiah. She heard about Jesus. I guess every society has its grapevine, even or especially the society of the sick. And probably the word among the lepers and the left out is, this Jesus can heal, and he's coming this way. He's coming by the invitation of the synagogue ruler, Jairus. He's coming here to Capernaum. Ooh. Let me share with you the verses that precede this woman's story, 21 to 24. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. And as we said earlier, Jesus went with him. You know, I, I always thought it kind of odd to find the synagogue ruler and the sick woman in the same story. Because he's pretty powerful. And, and she's pretty, to use a P word, maybe pitiful. He's someone in demand and she's kind of, well, she's insignificant. He's high and she's low. But here's the thing. His daughter is dying. So he seeks Jesus out also. Isn't it true that tragedy levels the social playing field? Sickness and death affects the rich and the poor alike. Let me ask you all. Anybody here so rich that they're never going to die? Anybody here that is in such good health that they're never going to die? It kind of looks like the synagogue leader and the sick woman find themselves on the same path right there in that village. But for us, they find themselves on the same page of this Bible story, both needing a touch both needing a touch of love. As the crowd comes, the sick woman thinks what's recorded in the last part of verse 28, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. So just at the right time, she scurries through the crowd, maybe bumping people as she goes. Those she touches are appalled. They've been touched by somebody unclean. Ooh! She doesn't stop. Twelve years on the streets have toughened her up a little bit. And Jesus' robe is in sight. Four tassels dangle from his clothing. They're ornaments of holiness worn by Jewish men. How long has it been since she touched anything holy? She extends her hands towards a tassel. And I gotta tell you, it's a sick hand. It's a tired hand. The hand that maybe a husband no longer wants or a family no longer needs. Everybody love verse 29? Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. She touches the robe. She just touches the robe of Jesus. And immediately the bleeding stops and she could feel that she had been healed. And life rushes back in. Think about Lorraine Mars. What a cool story. Her pets can't say cancer. Life rushes in. Her cheeks that were pale turn pink. Her breasts that maybe were shallow become full. And the sick woman feels power enter her. 
just touched the tassel. And Jesus feels what's recorded in verse 30. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? The sick woman felt power go into her and, and Jesus felt power go out. I, I always wonder, did Jesus even surprise himself here? Has Jesus the divine moved faster than Jesus the human? Has the savior outstepped the neighbor? Who touched my clothes? And his disciples think he's crazy. You see the people all around you? What's the matter, you? And yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Now, we can't fault this woman for being timid here. She doesn't know what to expect. Jesus could berate her or embarrass her. She's certainly seen enough of that. Besides, he was her last choice. She sought the help of dozens of others before she sought his. And you know what? Sometimes we do the same things, folks. We go everywhere else before we go to Jesus. And what about the people? What will they do? She certainly knows what to expect there. Unclean! And check this out. What will the synagogue ruler do? This Jairus, he's upright and, and she's unclean. And here she is, basically lunging at the town guest. It's no wonder she's afraid. But she has one reason to have courage. She has one. She is healed. She's healed. Verse 33. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, Jesus' feet, and trembling with fear, told him, I love this, the whole truth. She told him the whole truth. I wonder how long it has been since someone put the car of life in park, turned off the key, and listened to her story, the whole story, the whole truth. But this woman reaches out to Jesus, and he does. With the synagogue ruler's daughter dying, and a crowd pressing all around him. He still makes time for a woman, a woman on the fringe, a woman who is lost, a woman who is sick, a woman who is outcast. This is my favorite part of the story. And using a term Jesus gives to no one else. He calls her daughter. He calls her daughter. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And Jesus, the Christ, moves on because he still has a dead girl to fix. And the once sick lady moves on too. Now here's the question, folks, because I don't know about you, but it's a little harder for me to move on. Maybe it's hard for you to move on too. I think it's hard for us to move on because I think we've been there. We've been her, maybe we still are her. Desperate and dirty and drained and illness took her strength. 
but I can ask us all, what's taken yours? Finances? Maybe it's a substance or a drink. Maybe it's, it's late nights. Maybe it's proud hearts. Maybe it's that office that won't let go. Maybe you're with a child too soon, maybe too often. What has taken your strength? My friends, is the sick woman's touch, is it, is it yours and mine? If so, we need to take heart because our family may not touch us, society may avoid us, but Jesus wants to touch you. When you reach for him through the crowd, he knows. And he longs to touch you, and he longs to love you, and he longs to make you whole. We're not talking about Valentine love. We're talking about just a touch of God's love. Let's pray.